Ian, it seems strange to say it because it feels like a lot longer because so many games have happened and so much has happened at the club, but you've not even been here three months yet. Um, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah, I've loved it. It's a brilliant, brilliant football club. It really is. Um, I so enjoyed being around the players and the, the staff and the, the people around the club in the office. And yeah, it's a, it's been a great experience for me. You know, I came back to England after being seven years away and I was wondering when I came back, where would I find my, my feet and where would I find home? And it certainly feels like home um, at Notts County. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's been up and down, um, you know, but the, I really feel like we, we've made progress and, and I feel like the building blocks are in place for, for what hopes to be a, a really good long project, which is what I, I, I had my eyes on when I came here. Well, let's have a look at a little bit about the story so far. As you mentioned, it has been up and down. It wasn't the ideal start, was it? Obviously, a disappointing defeat at Hornchurch and results after that it took a while to pick up. How do you reflect on your first few weeks? Oh, it was a whirlwind, really. You know, it happened so fast. And then I arrived at the club and, you know, within 24 hours, we're playing in a game and I didn't really feel like I knew knew the squad in depth. I was kind of going off at the last handful of games and, and hoping that the, the players would carry us through because, um, you know, I didn't have any time on the training pitch. It was just to put a team out and, and motivate them. And, and, you know, it was... A crazy game against Hornchurch followed by a loss you know after two minutes we had the dodgy penalty against Aldershot and then we I don't think we barely created a shot that game it was uh, not a good performance and then you know after that we had a couple of wins Wrexham home and, and woke in a way and then we went through a really rough period um, where I really feel like we were finding our feet I was learning quickly about the group and about the individuals and still without any kind of real training time um, so it was a really strange start because any any club even clubs I've gone to mid-season before I've had a, a period of time to work on the training pitch before the games have got going whereas this was just straight into to matches and organizing the team and recovering the players so it was a really whirlwind first few weeks and and the results were not where we wanted them to be but you know I was confident that once I could get on the pitch and really work with the players and them get to know me a little bit that we could see progress and I felt like we got that you know without a doubt towards the end of the season Yeah there was a point wasn't there where there was a massively noticeable change in performance levels but results weren't seeming to catch up but you always had that confidence that you know the two would marry up at some point Yeah because you, you have to believe in what you're doing and, and I I think it was before the Torquay game I felt like the Torquay game was a bit of the tipping point the 2-2 game there um, and, and that it's no coincidence that we had a full week's training prior to that game and that was maybe the first time we actually got on the grass and kind of got to grips with the players and, and then I, we lost away at Eastleigh but it was a strange game the first half we could have killed them off with two or three goals and we didn't and then you know the confidence was maybe a little bit low we got sucker punched there but I think the win against Sutton was it was coming we knew that a win was coming and the minute we got that win it felt like the tension was off a little bit. The players relaxed and then they really embraced the way that we wanted to play. And then we really saw, I felt they came all out then that, those last handful of games, even though there was a lot of pressure on every game because we couldn't afford to lose many. They still played with the freedom that I thought was really exciting and, and I was happy to see it. Everything did start to click, didn't it? And you know the, the results and the performances were you know a really enjoyable um, spell for us. And it took us into the playoffs. Um, how would you reflect on the playoff campaign as a whole? I mean, obviously disappointing. I mean, the first game against Chesterfield was was magnificent. I thought we played really well. I thought we were well worth the victory. Um, you know, but we did it in dramatic style in front of our fans, so that was great. When we went down to Torquay, I went down there. I felt with what was a very brave lineup uh, in terms of going away against second in the the league, and we went with. Uh, probably one out and out centre half, but I wanted to set a marker to say, like, if I'm asking my players to play with courage, then I should manage with a bit of courage as well and believe that we can go and win any game. And I want us to have that mindset. So we went down there, and and I felt like, you know, conceding after 30 seconds, albeit I've seen it again, and and it was definitely uh, offside there. But we didn't come, and that our my my idea was that we went down and. I saw the the way our crowd got behind us and how important it was for us. And I felt like I want to put a team down that's going to attack this game and quieten the crowd. 
but we didn't start in the way that we wanted and we gave the crowd real motivation. And I, although I thought we controlled the first half and was probably the happier coach, I would guess, going in at 1-1, I think if we could have had another 15 minutes of control in the game, maybe we could have turned that crowd into our favour. But the fact we gave them another goal so early um, just kept giving them that momentum. Um, but I thought we went there and gave everything. Um, we never gave up. I thought we played some nice football and and uh, it's a learning experience that we'll take with us. So obviously we, we go into the new season not looking forward to an EFL season, which we'd hoped for, but I just wonder how excited you are for your first full pre-season and then to follow a bit more of a standard league campaign where there's not so many midweek games and <coughs> fans back in. You know, you've got a real chance to get your teeth stuck into it, haven't you? Yeah, and I think that, you know, I came in at a very unusual time. I mean, it, I've, like you say, I've only been in since March, but that back end of the season, I've had 18 games. So 18 games, plus the Horn Church, so 19 games. So, I mean, 19 games in that short space of time is is crazy, really. Um, so it's quite unusual, the situation that we had to, to manage. And But uh, like I said, from where I took over to where we finished, I really feel like we showed the progression in... And I think we started to show the fans exactly the way in which we we want to play uh, with that attacking intent and with that intensity. And and um, so now, although I had a couple of days where I was extremely disappointed after the Torquay game and I kind of stepped back and said, you know what, though, I feel so excited about a new season, regardless of what league we're in. I feel excited about the group of players, about this football club um, and about what we can maybe produce going into a new season and, and we want to do exactly what we did towards the end, produce exciting games of football that we want to believe we can go and win, um, attack with that kind of vigour and energy um, and and see where that takes us. Given the late finish to the season, will pre-season look different to a to a normal one this, this summer or will it sort of follow the usual lines? I couldn't tell you because I've never done a, an English pre-season. I've done horrific three-month Scandinavian pre-seasons which are long and boring and tedious. So I'm happy to only have six weeks because I'm used to three months in Sweden or Norway. Um, but I think it looks pretty much... However we finished, I think the only change that we would have had to adapt to was if we went up because we'd lost a couple of weeks. But as we don't, you know, the players will get a decent enough break now, albeit they can't do so much with it travelling in. But they'll get to rest up a little bit. We'll start back and we've got a good games programme organised. And, and um, you know, I really look forward to just spending the time out on the grass with the players and, and working hard. Mm, it is a packed fixture schedule, isn't it? You've got a, a pre-season friendly at the end of your first week yeah. um, back with the lads. Um, Derby at home, Wayne Rooney's team coming yeah. here and also York City and a, a number of challenging away games as well. Just talk us through the, the process and, um, and the reasons you chose the particular games that we did. Yeah, I mean, we start off um, with the, the, the first week and we put a game in at the end and we put a game that is, of course, against a lower level team in Colville. But it will just give us a chance to get out and maybe get everybody 45 minutes and, and maybe some youth players and some reserve players and, and be able to kind of just get the legs going and, and be back out and, and remember how to play football. I think that's, that's always a good thing to do. Um, and then, we yeah, like you say, we've got some tough away games like Boston and some, uh, some other good games home like York, which are going to be good challenges for us um, top teams. Um, in their respective leagues and I think they'll they'll provide a good challenge for us and of course then we've got Derby at home and you know I'm keen to play against teams that have really gone to stretchers and I think the one thing that does is it kind of exposes in an extreme way where your weaknesses are so you know we, we play against Derby and we try and play our way on our terms but you know I'm sure at some point we'll get we'll get uh, found out our weaknesses at that moment so that that's a really good thing for us you know I'm all up for playing very good teams and, and finding out where we're lacking because that's what pre-season's about. There'll be two elements of pre-season that fans are really looking forward to see. As always, new signings, how are they performing in the friendlies? But I think there'll be a, a lot of intrigue about the formation and, and the systems that you mm. take a look at in pre-season. Obviously, the, the, the five at the back, three five two, however you look at it, that seems to, to be you know your preferred system towards the end of the season, brought a fair degree of success as well. Are you rigid on, on that as the way forward or have you got other ideas? I, I don't think I've ever been rigid with a with a system. I think I use so many different systems over the years and I'm quite comfortable with that. Systems can often be quite player-driven 
Um, but uh, it's certain characteristics in the roles that are important. But no, I, I like the back three that we played with and I like the the nature of having the right and the left of the back three comfortable to, to step into the game. You know, you saw Brins doing it, Chicks doing it. Um, so we need players that are really brave to get on the ball and drive in and overload. And yeah, I, you know, we and again, different games are going to require different types of players. Um, but, you know, we've used quite offensive wing backs and attack games. So, no, I like the the, the back three work really well for us and, and I'm comfortable coaching any system. But I'm, I'm never averse to, to looking at other options because maybe we need them during the year. But um, I, when we're recruiting now, I think we look generally at the back three because I think that brought us the most success. You've obviously offered Michael Doyle the, the assistant head coach role. Are you planning any other changes to your backroom staff or any other additions or are you happy with what you've got? I think we've got some great staff here, really, really good staff. Um, but, you know, I'm going to look at and, and talk with the, the chairman and, and the other guys in the club about if we feel there's anything that we're missing or anything that we might be able to add uh, that can bring us another 5% or 10%. And, and I'm always open for that. So, um you know, I want to kind of go back through the, the, the backroom staff now. Everybody's done a brilliant job, um, but, you know, there's always room for for improvement. And, uh, you know, I'll look at that over the coming weeks. And finally, and the players obviously are now enjoying a, a well-earned rest. What lies um, sort of in store for you between now and the players' return in pre-season? I think my wife would like to see me um, and probably my kids for uh, some period of time. But I'm gonna. I, I think I'll be up in knots two or three days a week up at the stadium, planning and just uh, preparing some recruitment bits and planning the pre-season, the training sessions, and just making sure we're we're absolutely on point when we come back on 12th of July. And then you know, of course, I'll use a bit of time to to try and relax and brush up on my golf game, um, which is terrible. And uh, yeah, you know, you, the, the work never stops really. The phone rings every day and, and uh, you know, I'll use some time as well over the next few weeks to keep in touch with the players and uh, make sure they're doing the right things and, and make sure everybody's recharged their batteries and ready to go at the start of the season. What was the parting message to the players when you've had meetings with, with them all, haven't you, over the last couple of days? What was your main message to them for over the summer? I mean, you know, my, I guess after the Torquay game, my, my party message to the entire group was that I was very grateful for the work that they put in, both for me and for the football club and, and the, the way in which they, they conducted themselves. I think it was very, very good. Um, and when I've had the individual meetings, you know, for the players that are staying, it is be ready because this will, when we come back, we need to go up another level. Um, we've shown what we can do in some of the games, but we need to do that consistently. And to do that, we need to really drive it with... I want to increase the intensity, I want to increase the tempo, I want to increase every the quality of what we're doing on the training pitch every day. So don't have three weeks off and sit and uh, drink beer and come back and think that we've got six weeks to be ready. Uh, be ready on the 12th because we're going to hit the ground running and I want to try and take us on to the next level.